So I guess at this point it will be interesting to tell you what the heck I'm doing. So basically I have this new website, I mean I bought the domain the other day. Uh, basically to start sharing kind of like my fiction. Uh, you know what I mean, right? So I don't know if you have been following me for a while, but besides coding and many other hobbies, one of them is like I like to write fiction and I started semi-seriously like a couple of years ago. So I have a, a novel on the works that I'm hoping to finish this year. Well, finish <laughs> the draft, to finish the first draft this year. I'm getting to the 100,000 uh, words so you know it's getting uh, I think I just have like a last part to finish um, but there is other things and other stories that I want to start sharing in this kind of fictional uh, universe so I wanted to start having a place to share those stories without the need of you know thinking too much so that's the goal of this website right and it's it's super simple it's super bare bones I don't want anything special about it but you know like with time like uh i mean like they are stupid inspirations because i'm never gonna get there you know but if you think something like uh what the cosmere uh this is the spanish website but the, the idea yeah, like it's the same so you can think about you know how the multiple words and you know like the different sagas that there is and what it is and all the stuff like kind of like a way 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 simplified version of this because this is run by a community and also the other inspiration, it's kind of like the universe of League of Legends, which if you don't know and you think it's just like a stupid games that the, the kids play, uh, yes, the game it is. <laughs> and it's it's very frustrating to play the game. I, well, it's very frustrating to play any online game, right? Like people, people are the worst. But the point is... The universe behind uh, League of Legends, which is called, like, the world is called, like, uh, Runeterra. It's amazing, it's huge, it's gorgeous, honestly. Like, if you like fantasy, you should definitely go and and take a look. And you can see, like, there are multiple regions, and they explain, like, every region, what is that, like, Bilgewater, like, like, you can see the pirates here and everything. They will have a super cool map that you can explore and all that stuff, right? So these are just inspirations because of course i'm never gonna get here but that's kind of like what i want my like this website to be in in the general sense basically a place where i can dump everything i want from my fictional universe and with time hopefully it can grow into being something useful right for me and for you know like potential readers if somebody wants to read like a short story or something if i ever publish one uh, so I have to be very careful with this because I didn't want this to become an excuse to not write. So uh, I've tried to do the setup as easily as as most comfortable for me. So I could have gone with you know like paying for a WordPress site or paying for any other like kind of like website builder site, but I feel like that. You know, it's too expensive, to be honest, for what I need. And then you can start thinking about plugins and like tweaking these and themes and stuff like that. You know, so it's like the post, it's easier to do things, but ha having those possibilities in there also make it kind of like harder, like not harder, but make make it so my brain goes there and not in the in the fiction writing, which is what I actually want to be dedicating my time. And you will say, well, I mean, you're just wasting time, like, messing with Swift and all that stuff. Yeah, so, like, for me, the easiest thing is just working with Swift. It's what I love and it's what I do every day. So that's the easy part. The tricky part is the website side itself. But if I want to keep it simple in the styling side and the website side, I think I can do it. And since I've done it before, I know how it works. I know it's going to be stable. And this is just a static site. I deploy it and it works and it's not gonna be messing up with anything. And then to make it a little bit even easier to deal with the styling, because it's one of the things I hate the most, having to deal with CSS, uh, like the default, like just tweaking the default theme that comes with Publish, which is very simple, and it's very easy to work with. 
even just that level of tweaking CSS, it's very annoying for me. It's like, it makes no sense. Like you change something, it breaks something else. CSS is awful, right? So I've been hearing for a while about this Tailwind CSS, you know, which, you know, it's a modern framework like uh, for CSS. And what I think it appeals to me is that it's similar to how you do things in like in iOS, for example, or macOS, like anyway, in Swift UI, right? In the sense that the style, it's part of the view you are working with. If you make a text and you want to make it bigger, you apply that font or that color or whatever on the text itself. You don't make the indirection of defining this text as a class and then some come what else completely unrelated, you put the styling. That's not how we work. That's not how I've ever worked. So for me, this way of working with CSS and defining styles and stuff, it makes no sense to me. Like it, I find it very, very stupid to be honest. And it seems that the industry kind of like agrees and with time they have gotten to realize that, yeah, it's better to put like inline CSS and stuff like that, although that has, that comes with their own problems, right? So this kind of seems like the middle ground between you use inline CSS, but the classes, they're like, I think they call it the utility classes. They, you don't ever write CSS. You have like everything you need to just put it here. And that's just like applying modifiers in a Swift UI view. Like there is no much difference, right? So, and to be honest, it would be pretty cool. Like if, uh, like you, you could imagine a system where all these utility classes could be like co-generated for Swift and you could just go here and say, okay, background, uh, white, you know, and that actually under the hood, just use this, you know, that could be like a pretty cool, you know, project to even bring more niceties to developing websites with Swift. You know, but that's for another day. That's for somebody else. That's not going to be me. Uh, so that's where I am. I just want to make a reasonable, simple, but, you know, clean, semi nice website just to start having something, you know, to, to put stuff in. Uh, the theme is there, so I'm not sure I'm going to change much. The Let me start by getting this bit boy because I will need it and if I don't, if I don't get this working, it's going to be quite quick. Okay. So in theory, uh, let me open fork. Let me open fork. Uh, let me change. The, I don't think I have. There we go. Cool. So what do we have this? It's 43 megabytes. So mm, that's maybe a lot. That may be a lot to commit, right? That's annoying. That's what I hate about this. I mean, it's. I don't know, it's better than needing to install and keep up with npm, but I don't know how much. So let's, let's just not commit it for now. Yeah, they rename it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let me see. If I do this, what is this going to do? Created a file with a basic config. Okay, and where is this big boy? Here. Okay, I guess that's... Hmm. I have no clue. I have no clue. And if I start a watcher, that's gonna put the CSS. Yeah, but it's not gonna do anything, right? Because I don't have anything configured yet. Yeah, there is no input file okay okay so i'm gonna start with this because i mean i'm gonna need the typography for the markdown part so i'm pretty sure i need that and that's kind of it on this side so 
Yes, we need to put the content. But I need to get my head around on how. Like, what's the file structure of this big boy? Because it's a bit, little bit confusing, let's say. So, I mean, the resources are here, right? So the style, it's this guy. Okay. Yeah, so I need to basically change I need to make a new file here and to be honest for the CSS uh, I'm gonna open visual code for the CSS part even though it's very small you know like doesn't need to and even though it takes like ages to open like look at this dude come on the freaking M1 insane it's insane how you get like the most powerful computer there is and still there is software that is like nope i don't care i'm gonna be laggy and take like 300 years to open that's fine you do you that's how bad things are nowadays man and there is always a common denominator you know because it's like visual code Microsoft Teams, you know, they like, you know what the common denominator is. Nobody has to say it. Okay, so let's go here. Look at this. Come on! Oh my god. Uh, so we can get rid of this CSS. Like, I'm just gonna rename this and say. So they are using input because it's gonna be pre processed. Right? So we can just get rid of this and say okay do this tailwind thing and then so the content what is the content so the content is gonna be in here does this auto complete? Mm. Yeah, shut up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, so I need to point to where the sources are, which is basically sources. And in here, just take everything that ends with. for now and that should do it I think so now if I at least do this specified input file input CSS does not exist uh, yeah that's fine but I haven't specified it so I imagine, give me a second because, uh, like let me make this bigger for a second, editor setup, because maybe we can get some auto completion for the C, I don't know if it's gonna be for, only for the CSS itself, but maybe it also does it for the configuration and that stuff, okay. You must have installed content. What is this? Yeah, that should be fine. So I have it installed, then the auto completion linking. Mm, yeah, I guess. So if I go here, do I get anything useful? Uh, not really. Okay. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Auto complete. 
I mean that should be it, right? Okay. So for now let's stick with this. And 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 let me figure it out. I mean I guess I can just check this guy, right? So I mean you can go to this GitHub because somebody has already done like a publish theme with Tailwind, so we're just gonna take that. Uh, now the question is where is this config? Because I don't think it's this, right? No. Ah, so he puts it in there. Okay, let's let's do that. So if I do this, also isn't that weird because you don't want this to be compiled into the final website. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a fan of this. Even the input CSS shouldn't be there, to be honest. So let me pull it back because I want the output to be there. Okay. Okay. The globe pattern in Util is invalid. Updated to ah because there is only ah well it's a warning because there is only one one option inside so that should be it okay no TDT classes were detected in your source files is this an expected no it, it that's expected okay but where did you put the output CSS yeah okay so I need to change that so I need to delete this guy and I'm gonna make a folder for tailwind I'm gonna move these things in there, in there, and in there. Let's do this for now. So I need to do this, but... Ah, I have to specify the input here. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So... In that case, let me bring this out. And how do I structure this? Input CSS, output CSS, okay. So, what I think I want is for the input to be on the sources. The config can stay here, that's fine. So I can get rid of this folder. Yes, so the input, it's actually... It's actually in the sources input input CSS okie dokie and the output needs to be on the resources no in the output output well okay so what do I need to do for this because it's like two tools working together right so is it so I guess I need to run first the tailwind to generate the CSS and then and then publish can do its work but isn't that a little bit painful How is it? Let me see. Mm. So what step does this have? Do, 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 do. Copy resources. Yeah, so copy resources. It just copies the website my resources into the output. Yeah, so that's so f because of this, I don't want. I don't want the output to be generated in the resources. So I need to generate the output directly here. Okay, so let's call it. Let's do this. And it also gonna help me with the watch. So I need to put it on output 
and I'm gonna call it style CSS because that's styles, okay? Styles CSS, okay. So if I run this, I should get the style CSS modified by Tailwind, perfect. And I don't have anything on resources right now, and that's fine. That's fine. So, and the input for now is just this, which I'm still not sure what the heck is going on. And just to double check the, yeah, I guess resources path. Mm, is that gonna break something? Okay, let me do one. Let me do another thing. Let me start publish and I need to do okay so like I'm like for th this is a new project it's a new website okay and I'm using kind of like the default publish for now if you have seen me before work with my own website uh, I don't use the publish command line directly I have in my package so if I show you my package there are different targets on the package itself, which is very handy because like I have a package for the website, I have a package for some extra utilities to create uh, like thumbnails, like the poster and all that stuff. And I have one, which is the CLI. So this actually uses internally the, the published CLI, but I don't use it directly. So, and I have like a type alias, so I can just do uh, AMP. Uh, I think it was surf, it's been a while I don't make a post. And that triggers internally everything that needs to be triggered to... Ah, yeah, I am on the wrong folder, I was supposed to be here. But this basically does the same as doing a publish... A publish run, which I don't like at all the name, that's why <laughs> I changed it. Because I've, I've used, I don't know, like many different static site builders in the past and everyone has a different a different naming convention so I, I think I got used to using surf as a word or something like that or preview you know so I have like a couple of like on my internal website I have a couple of a couple of in the CLI I mean I have a couple of shortcuts for that so sorry I got distracted because I was reading this uh, fail to copy the resources yeah that's fine so I need to basically tell publish to not copy any resources. And I guess I'm gonna put a comment here. Uh, CSS can CSS is generated in the output by tailwind. No need That said, uh, don't I have to, like, okay, okay, so we have a bare bones system, now the question is, is this guy loading the CSS at all? Let me see what is met meta meta length. Links, yeah, so it's taking the CSS, okay. So it's taking the CSS, and this guy is listening for it. So, what if I what if I just do this? What happens? Done, and if I refresh, nothing changes. Ah, there you go. Now it now it did something. As always, like it's super annoying to develop website. But ah, okay, okay. So this is more kind of like what I was expecting because this base does a CSS reset, so it gets rid of all the styles. So that's kind of like okay, we start from scratch. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the other thing that will be nice is if the web 
browser refreshed automatically and I have no clue how I did that. Anyway, you know, like for now, let's fetch it. Now let's just use, let's use your, where I am, yeah, need to go up. And let's publish run and let's leave it there. And I will have to refresh every single time, but you know, tough life. Now, it's very annoying because I, can, I already see that. I already see that we are better. Because I don't understand why it's using this. Yeah. Because as far. Yeah, I'm missing something. I'm missing something and it's breaking my goals. Because we have this, right? And this does. Unless this is the default style. Like, is this Tailwind default style? It doesn't. I mean, maybe it is. But I, I would have thought the reset. Maybe I'm just making it up, you know? Oh, wait, there is no. Ah, okay. Okay. Is it because every time. So, if I do this. So is it because every time I do a build, the CSS disappears? That could be it. Because I think we, I don't think we have a CSS file now. So this is the browser default, which makes sense. Okay. Need to be careful with that. So the order of execution needs to be quite. this the other position is to be quite clear so that's important okay so now publish has built and there is no CSS and this guy hasn't kicked in yet because we haven't changed anything on these files but if I go here and I do hello boom Uh, weren't you supposed to do something? Ah, maybe it's because I haven't done anything. Okay. So now we have a CSS file, and now this is the default. Okay. That's interesting, but... I don't know, like, shouldn't... Modifying the... I mean, I would have expected modifying... Buying the answers. Mm, that's it. That should be fine. Okay. Let us let us let us let us do something simple to start with. So let's go here. Mm. And again I have no clue how any of this works. So, 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 let's take a look. Let's go here and start checking out the theme. This guy, okay. So, let's start with the title, okay? So, let me see. So, the HTML, okay, site header. Let's start with the site header. So the site header is an h1 and I need to put class here, so if I go to this, so I'll just take a look at this guy, <coughs> so if I go to the theme, just to get a little bit more familiar, so if I go, let me see. I imagine there is a page, page body, there you go, 
Okay, so the body has a class, all right? Okay. Which means that what we can do is go first body. And if I do class, okay, so I just do this for now, not at all what I want, but I want to see mm. I don't think the watcher let me see if I do the watcher. That's that's not good. That's not good because this is definitely a utility class. DV. Why? Yeah, see? Yeah, so BG White is a utility class. Definitely. Mm. the content ah it is inside blue walls that's why there is a hidden folder in there now there you go and now if we go here uh doesn't work because I need to run I need to r I need to run this okay so that's the that's the test right so member class Wait, so I can't put any CSS on the body. That's I mean there must be another way, right? If I do HTML, head body, unique. So this is the nodes, and this is kind of the new one, right? Create an HTML document with a set of head nodes and a closure that defines the components that should make up the body. But still, okay, well, let's. Yeah, this is very weird. So if I do the head, so if I do this, uh, if I do this one, this one will work, but of course I need to run it, and now it's the question that we had before, running it will probably, yeah, it destroys the CSS, it destroys the CSS, which if I do this to this, but now, if I do I modify this, it reruns, and there is a CSS now. Okay. Okay. So if I do font sans, font serif, I think it is. Yeah, I'm sure it's the only thing, right? And if I do background black, mm, I don't know if anything is changing uh, 
Ah, because I need to rerun. Yeah, of course. It's all the time the same. Like, I, even if I change the CSS here, like it doesn't matter because I need to rerun it. Now it does. Okay, okay. Getting the hunk out of it. So I need to rerun it, which I mean, it's 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 not that slow. But what I need to fix is the. So in other words, this watcher it's completely useless. Yes, in other words, this watcher is completely useless. Okay, okay, that just means I need to go here. And after everything is done, I can add uh, an additional step. Okay, to the to this. Um, Seems like Xcode finally likes this syntax, okay. And that's fine, but also completely useless because what we need is to run this. And for that, I'm gonna take another, another package from Sandel, which I never remember which one it is. Uh, what was it called? Shell out. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna put package name. And how was it exact or something? Two three zero. And I guess this is called shell out. And we put the dependency here as shell out. Okay, cool. And this was what I don't remember. Uh, exact or something. And now it's working. So <laughs> I guess it's Xcode. Nothing goes up. Uh, and now I can do dependencies and put this guy here. Okay, and now I can import a shell out, and here I can do try shell out to shell out to. So I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but we can try it. And as arguments, we can just put this. Okay, let's see if that works. What happened? Why? Come on, mate. Let's see if the compiler directly is more useful. Okay, yeah, I see the compiler. Okay. Think. Ah, fatal error. Yeah, okay. Command of phone. Yeah, fair enough, but like. Xcode doesn't let me run it, but yeah, this seems. Okay, please declare resource re to exclude from the target. Which one? The input CSS. Yes, okay, so I need to exclude it from the target. Now, good luck remembering how to exclude this, right? exclude and we can say input CSS okay let's run this again now that warning is gone and I just need to fix so what if I do this 
Okay, so that worked. In theory, in theory, now we should see <coughs> that output is gone. Oh, it crashed. Okay. Because this fucker is running from somewhere else. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, how did I solve this? I mean, this is not new. I already solved that on my other website. The question is how? How did I do it? Like the step has the site output folder <coughs> retrieve a folder at the hidden path starting from the website's root so if I do this root does this work? And then I do this. Does that work? I okay, I mean that's a folder, right? So I need like the path. Specified input sources does not exist. Okay, but it ran. Okay, so that's already that's already something. So the thing is that these sources it thinks it's relative. Yeah, so it needs to be relative to this. Same for this, I guess. Okay, there you go. And if we check now the output, it has the CSS. So this means that I can go here and refresh this. And if we go back to the theme and I say background black and I run. Why do I feel like this should work? You can set a custom working directory in the schema settings. Yes, yes. Does that does that get persisted? Yeah, you're right. I haven't done that in ages. Because before, like since this is not a s Xcode project, you know what I mean? It's not an Xcode project. This is like a of a Swift package. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be persisted. But yeah, like I mean that 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 should work. If it gets persisted now that it's fully integrated, that should work. But still, why the heck this doesn't work? Like I'm just like let me just double check it's not Yeah no. It doesn't, but it definitely has not the head. Sorry, the CSS did. Okay, let me start cleaning it up. Let me clean up. So let's see this wrapper, the header. So the header, what's the header? That's yeah, okay, that's the component, okay? And the wrapper, it's this guy. So can I just start getting rid of this? Like to be honest, I'm just gonna get rid of all the classes. Because I don't want to confuse 
Okay, that's good to know. So it's persisted as long as you... Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. So I, I, w I was still thinking, you know, in the old days when it was not... When it was not fully integrated yet. Yeah, so I want to get rid of all these things. I'm just doing one by one because I like to be sure of what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep this one because that's the one I'm working with. And this one... I'm gonna comment it because I want to remember that I have to do the... Okay. So now... Now this, this should help me just easily see what, you know. Yeah, so this is the header. Yeah, let me make this a little bit bigger. So this is the header with the H1. And the header has these things. And these things... They should exist, right? This is interesting because you can feel the two levels at which I am playing, right? It's like one thing is you have like a bug in front of you and you know you're trying to figure it out. That's one level, but the other level it's I don't work with CSS ever. <laughs> you know, so it's like it's pretty sure it's stupidly simple. But it's been, I don't know, at least a year. I don't touch even like or more since I don't do any kind of CSS at all. So, and we have all these systems together here, so it's even more confusing, you know. It's even more confusing. But let's see if we can figure it out. So we see that the class has this, okay, and the output has the style because it has to, because I'm seeing the reset happening, right? So just as a stupid thing, is this, like the background black thing doesn't exist here. So that's, that's what's annoying me, because it doesn't seem like, but it, before it did, right? So have I broken, Ah, is it because it's not picking up? Is it maybe because it's not picking up the... Like the configuration? If you know what I mean. So let me rewrite this a little bit. And let's do what, what you guys said. And let's try to do this. And change the root path. On the schema. Uh, now where is it? Where is it? Because I don't remember. Where is it? Mm 
Should give me an argument. Ah, working directory. Build product, no. That's cool. So if I run it, at least it shouldn't crash, right? <coughs> okay, so at least it doesn't crash. That's cool. Okay, so did this change anything? Did change anything, okay. And now if I go to the output styles CSS and I look for the background, it is there because it found it and the tailwind CSS actually did it. Perfect, so yeah, thank you very much because like what was happening, like I couldn't, I'm not sure, like there is probably some parameter. But the working directory was different, so although it find the binary, the binary itself was still looking for the plugins file. So what is it? This the config file in the wrong place and it didn't find it. And it probably was complaining or warning or something, but because this this like I don't know what's how it's set up. Like I, that's something I don't like with published steps because they hide the output. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm not sure if it's published or the shell out. But I don't like it. So let me do let me try to do output handle and just put standard output and error handle and put uh, errors, yeah, standard error. So if I run this now. Yeah, done in two seconds. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. So that's cool. Even if it makes this uglier, I want to see the output. Right? Because if I now do this, like you will see. If we go back and we. So let's go back here and we have the root, right? And let's put the handles. Uh, yes, sorry. I'm sure it was complaining and we didn't see it. Oh no, it didn't. Okay. Okay, well, in this case, it didn't matter. In this case, it doesn't matter, but still feels... It still feels weird. So I'm gonna keep it like this. Oh, I need to run the formatter over this before I forget, true. So for that, I have uh, includables, so I can do Swift format, and this is not the official Apple Swift format, it's the, the Swift format from Nick, and I want to run it here, and then for the config, I want to go up and find the format config. There you go. Cool. So that formatted everything. Okay, so this is really it's irrelevant, but whatever. The output, yeah, whatever. We are playing with it. This has moved. The formatter has done its job. So I'm just gonna commit that with my styles. And same for this. We need to get this one. The package and we're working with this so and yeah and uh i don't know what to do with the binary to be honest it feels quite biggy quite biggy but let's worry about that later so now we can finally go here and start looking at this and let me i don't know And now it changes. Perfect. So yeah, there is like kind of like I don't know, like a second of delay, but that's life. Uh, okay, so now that the easy part <laughs> it's done, we have 
the setup you know like this is the setup this is the setup now what how can i think about what i really want how can i think about what i really want without knowing anything about css so this just takes some inspiration This is some inspiration I had. Uh, I mean, inspiration like it's it's from the it's a theme from the creators of the Tailwind CSS. So, but I like it because there was like a couple of colors that I wanted to pick. Yeah. So, with that out of the way, I don't know what time is it. I'm gonna probably spend like just a little few more minutes to maybe bring it back to what it was before so like bring it back to this but with a better styling system basically so that's kind of what i'm gonna try to do now and i'm not sure how much i'm gonna be able to do but that's what i'm gonna aim, aim for so if i pick this yeah so like what i would like to see is uh, in tailwind dots the color palette colors yeah this is what I wanted so for the background I mean I guess we need to pick this what how they call it the slate so what do we pick a slate 900 so in theory if I do background slate 900 I think that's how it works so you do this and now you have the slate 900 okay that's good uh they also have support for uh, i mean you can see it here so this is built it's built by the creators of the same framework so it uses the framework of course and you can see that you can support very easily light and dark themes which is something i wanted to do for my website and uh, let's see for my website and the framework that i was using didn't support it so i said uh, screw it and just use you know just make make a dark website by default and that's it and I, and I like everything in dark and it's more comfortable so for now we can do that and to be honest it's not that it's it wouldn't be that hard to change this to be you know support both modes because the only thing you need to do is like i think you put dark here something like this and now this only applies you know to the dark mode so it will be a very, you know, like the workflow is like, it's very easy to change, you know, it, it will take time, but it will be very easy to change. Okay. So that will be this thing. My problem with this is that this is the site header, but I want a background on the entire thing. Right. So that's my, my inconvenience. So if I put orange 500, just for the for the sake of having a color that shows up okay yes so now i don't want this here i want it on the entire page how do i do that because i'm not i haven't seen how you can set these themes on the body and that's very annoying that's very annoying so let's see when I, mean, I could put a wrapper on everything i guess but let's see. So this is the body, right? But can I do style class? Does this work? No, it doesn't. Because body cannot static member body cannot be used. Yeah, that makes that makes no sense. Okay, HTML language. But so okay, so but what? There is another initializer, right? We need head body. Okay, so let me just take a look at this one.
the like the bit I don't understand is that when you do this, it puts the attribute. So can I do this? And then the body. I don't know, just put this for now. Does this work? Referencing static method. Yeah, like it doesn't like the static method anymore, right? Because this is kind of like the new syntax. So how do you... Like is there a head note or something? There should be, right? Mm, that's very annoying. And I copy pasted the theme and I created this like with the most recent version. So I was expecting, you know, I was expecting this to be kind of like fully supported, but they don't seem like, they don't seem like you can use the builder for this. So we're going back here. Yeah, so I guess the question is, I don't understand how to put uh, Like this is the body, but how can you put something in it? Because for this, you can just say class And put, I don't know, bg uh, orange Let's put red Right, so this works Yeah, BG red. And why didn't do it? Isn't there a red? Like, do I have to specify the thing? Okay, maybe. But I cannot do this on the body. But neither, neither I can do this, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. You can make a component. So how did this guy do it? Maybe 
this. Then what? How the heck do you do this? I mean, I'm gonna open publish, but I doubt. I doubt. This, there is any documentation. Yeah, there is no documentation. That's the unfortunate part of all of this, that the documentation is very lacking. I mean, it hasn't even been updated. Hasn't even been updated for for the new system. Mm. Maybe plot has. Yeah. No, it's the same thing, right? Playing attributes, components, but components protocol and protocol can render high-level components. Yeah, so component. Okay, so as the above example shows, we first need to write the components. To integrate the above component into a node based hierarchy, you can simply wrap it into a node using the component API. Okay. But this is a component based system. Okay, but this is not, right? Yeah, so in theory I can do, do I can do this. So I can do this. And put this. Right, so this is the class of the body. And now I put the head header and I say, okay, you're a component now. Isn't that what you were saying here, bro? Components. Ah, component and you pass it. That's fine. This is a little bit ugly, but it should work. So I put a component and I put it here. Okay. And you need a comma, of course, because we are not using builders anymore. And you put a component and you put it there. And if we give it a notch with this, Okay. Okay. So now now the body has this. Okay. So if I say red five hundred, 
Brad Hell Hunter. Victory. Victory. I need the sound of the Final Fantasy then. Okay, now of course that's not what we want, right? But we're getting closer. So yeah, it's very. I don't know. I don't like. It's, it's like I don't like that you cannot do what I wanted. Like it's 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 just weird. And yes, you have the other one, right? So this should work. But then I don't know how to put the head like this. Like, but this is a note, right? So I should just be able. Yeah, this is a note. So I don't understand why it didn't work. Anyway, not gonna waste more time on this. This works. Um, so instead. So now back here. Mm, what do they is late nine hundred? Let's see. Background late nine hundred. Late nine hundred. Okay. So there is a plugin that helps with a typography and I just want to check. So this is for pros. Yeah, but I should just do this in the in the CSS. In the CSS for the markdown. Okay, so uh, So I just put text and that's it. So if we go colors, like I don't know. Like I mean, the text should be white. So, but the thing is that which one you pick? Can we check? Let's see. Just as a research. So for example, this. What is this? Computed uh, text color. Zinc eight hundred. Well, I guess you're not using Zinc eight hundred for the light thing. Zinc hundred. Okay. But uh, I guess, like from a design perspective, is that because zinc hundred? Like, is that because you are using zinc as the background? Like, uh, like should these two colors be related? You know what I mean? Uh, I guess I didn't type it properly. Sorry, sorry. Yes, okay. So 
So that that reads. But I guess I want to see in the background. So what is that? Yeah, see they are using sync all the time. Okay. So let's use instead of us let use zinc. So it's like our grays are zinc, not slate. Okay, that's fine. I like it. So we're using 800 viewers. It changed a lot. 900. It changed a lot. So we're using zinc. Yeah. So the slate is more bluish, and the zinc is kind of like more like warmer. I, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, that works for me. Now, uh, font sans. Which is the font that we want? Uh, font, font style. That's not really what I want. Text. Mm. Well, I guess I can say font sans. Font family, okay. There you go. Right, so I don't know. I never know what's better. So, Sans. The Serif is the one that ends with that. Like, isn't it Serif better? Like, what if I don't put it? What happens? Like, what's the default? Yeah, default seems to be serif sans. Let me see how it looks with Serif because I think I like it more as in hmm. Yeah, I don't know This is Sans, right? Sans serif and this is serif. Yeah, this is sans. And maybe it does read nicer. I mean, one thing I need to do is increase the font size. So, uh, so there is that. So I guess if I click here, the font size is 48, but what is it defined on each, okay. <coughs> okay, I think I would like just to make it globally bigger. But anyway, okay, so we have this now living normal. What the heck is this doing? Living normal. Okay, it's the line height. Okay. And tracking is the tracking. I mean, do I need this? Is this guy defining it here? Hmm. Mm. 
bien. Me hacía un problema de ruido, ¿vio? No sé si va a pasar. Uh, let's open this because I want to see it. I, mean, I should get used to just running as, as soon as I say but whatever. Yeah, it doesn't change, so I'm just gonna keep it like this. Okay, so that's gonna be your basic style, right? That's gonna be your basic style. So now if you go to the side header. I'm gonna get rid of this. What does the wrapper do? Okay. There was a, a wrapper, right? Wrapper. Or content? Content, yeah. Please plug it into content. Mm, that's not what I was thinking about. I saw that there was something for the sizing. Where was it? Layout container, that's what I yeah, so container. Okay. So if I do that the wrapper is a container. Let's again with not remembering. So what happens now? Yeah, so it that it made everything kind of smaller, right? Even on the header, there is a container now. Okay. But I thought the container would be centered. Ah, no, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Container, it just sets the max width. Ah, uh, yes. They don't have anything. So you need to do, to center a container, use MX auto and to add padding. You put the padding yourself. Yeah. And now that is centered. Okay. You know, so I use this and it's always in there. Okay. Okay. And what if we do What if we do class background? Uh, what if we set zinc? So what was the other? 800? Zinc. 900. So what if we put an 800 zinc? Like to have that. Yeah, okay. 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 Of course, it's like on every separation. Yeah. Like that's always the question, right? Like, do you want? I think I'm gonna change this one. Like, why is the site header on its own wrapper? Anyway, let's let's not put this for now. But what I do want is a padding. Okay, so let me see. Okay, one second. And then you put the padding, and you put responsive centering by default. <coughs> okay, let me see if this what this is MX Auto.
but I'm in the container. To do it, you use the MX auto MX. Okay, MX is marching. Okay, and X is in both sides. No. Ah, no, X is horizontal. Ah, okay, so you are giving horizontal margins. Okay. Okay, yeah. And then, so like if I want to give a padding, you also do what? Padding on the horizontal axis of 4? Is that what you do? Uh, so I'm able to control. Yeah, PX for ah, but it uh, ah, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. So if we put bad the class B red, I don't know. Okay, it's not red. Yeah, now they have padding. They have padding now, so even if you make them smaller, there is some padding in it. Okay. 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 Like, I think I need. Okay, let's do it just because it doesn't pop up. Yeah, what was cool here is that. Uh, yeah, see, that's cool. Like, it's cool that the header background spans everything. So, let's try to do that. So, let's go back here to the site header. And let's say I, I get rid of this. So there is a wrapper, right? And the wrapper is the thing. Okay, so outside the wrapper, I can do this background, I don't know, yellow 400. There you go. That's cool. Of course, not yellow, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Let me open the freaking colors on its own tab. But an amber, I will then. Mm, I don't know. An amber 600? Let's try that. Amber 600. How does that look? Mm, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's me. Mm. Mm. If we do nine hundred, and what if we do yellow? Is it less white? Not a fun. Not a fun. So let's go back to the zinc. So if we do zinc 900, yeah, that doesn't change anything because I still cannot remember which one we put on the body. On the body was 900. So what if we turn down the one in the body? So the overall background is lighter, and we have that. Yeah, I, don't, I like that. Now one question I have is like, what if I do 500, 580? Is that 
that's a theme. Who's in a war vagina? No, that's not the view. Yeah, that didn't exist. Like at that point, you need to put your own, or you make a name customized like you want it with that specific shape, or you just put the hex value. Okay. Okay, okay. So then, let's like I just want to finish the site server. Okay. So we have this. But this edge needs to be bigger. So how do we do this? How do we do text size? Size, font size. Okay, so we just put text and the t shirt size. And I wish I could change the. So text and we put so what are the sizes? So base base is medium So what do we put XL? What is this guy doing? I, I like this size, but which one it is? Five XL. Okay. And it seems a little bit exaggerated, but. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then I want this to be margin horizontal auto. Uh, no, okay. So what if I put it here? Okay. Why is that? Why is that? Ah, because the text spans everything. Yeah, okay, but... Ah, because this one already has it, of course, yeah. And then I have something inside, so... Or I make another wrapper, but the size is the H1. Okay, and the P is also... Okay, so I guess I just need to change the text alignment then in that case, right? Center and that's it. And if I do it here, that should work. Yeah, okay. But then I want a margin. I don't know what margin 10 means, to be honest. Yeah, of course I don't want it here. Pardon. Yeah, but 
Okay, dann warte ich. Okay. That looks good. Um, is that the text transform? Yeah. Uppercase. If I put this here, then that's gonna be uppercase automatically, which I really like. And I actually like this getting being so close together. I actually like it very much. So, what if I even make it bigger? Yes, and I can make this paragraph text. I don't know. Excel. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that, yes, okay. And the link, I guess, if I go to the link, it's inside. Yeah, so I basically need to start making my own. Because I want to make the components, right? So I need to start making my own, but for now, let's say on hover, that's how it is, right? On hover, the, the text is gonna be amber, amber 300. I'm trying to do it without looking to get, you know, familiar with the syntax and that stuff. There you go. That's cool. That's cool. The thing is that this should be across the entire site. So I'm gonna put them here. And let's see if this works. Should concatenate the classes, right? I doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, that's shit! Okay, okay. That's shit, I thought the classes were not... didn't overwrite. Ah, when it's a modifier, it doesn't, right? Like, when it's a component modifier, you can put more than one, I think. Like, I think, right? Replace existing, false. Yeah, see? But when you do it with the other one, when you do it with this one, attribute, yeah, this just changes. I don't know, it's weird. It's weird, but okay. Uh, needs to be an hover <laughs> if it's a link. Uh, how can I target the link? Hmm. Like, there is a way to target the specific tags. But, okay, anyway. I'm actually tired, I need a break, so... I'm just gonna put this the way it was, and put it on the...
put it on the handle. Put it here. Now it is this. When you click on it, it goes where it needs to go. That's cool. And the navigation doesn't have, but I don't have any navigation yet. So that's cool. And then after this, it uses a wrapper and the paragraph. And here in the paragraph, to be honest, I would like just to so. Um, I think plugins. And if I look at the typography, so if I just do prose, MG prose exam, so this should work, right? Yes, but the fucker changed the colors. I even went with the change the colors. I can do pros in that. Oops. Pros in that. To basically make it change the color style. There you go. And since I'm using zinc, I should tell it to use zinc. Pros zinc. Okay, like it makes like makes sense how it all plugs together, which I'm kind of liking. Mm. Why it didn't invert it though? Dang! So, use zinc. Then make it bigger. So I guess you cannot change that. Mm. Okay. I mean, can you do pros? I don't think that's how it works, right? Yeah, no, that's not how it works. So I just need to say pros in that. And that's it. Which is kind of unfortunate, to be honest. But I did pick in the zinc. So maybe it's picking the zinc already. Like if I do slate. Yeah, it picks. It feels like it picks the the correct one, okay. Okay, I mean, I don't see much changes, but okay. Ah, mm, always, not only. Yeah, maybe not that.
Can I override? Can I override? Uh, so that's the question. Can I override element modifiers? Pros. Okay, so I think if I do this, let's say pros two dots, yeah. it's pros h1 two dots semicolon because it's this. So the H1 don't put it as an Excel because it's too much. Put LG, I guess. Dang, that's a huge difference that's a huge difference so if I don't put anything I guess it's using the Excel for all of it right and it's 58 and why is that Why is that? Yes, because you are picking up the pros XL. And that's 2.8. And if I do this, if I do this, you pick the LG, which is 18. That's such a big difference. shouldn't be that big of a difference, right? It's kind of weird. So if I do this... Ah, or is because... Ah, okay. Okay, there is, there is kind of like some in direction, so like this is XL. Yeah, but I don't know where the 56 pixels come from. Seems like a lot. Yeah, it feels weird. I don't understand how this typography works. But I'm gonna leave it for here for now. Control the text inflation. Uh, da, da, da. Mm, I thought it was 
much of that. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave it here. Cause it's late and I'm making some progress. Okay. I mean, I like it. If I go here, mm, it doesn't exist. I thought I had, yeah, but I don't. I don't have both circle posts, no block. Yeah, so this one doesn't. Yeah, so who knows? I need to go. Um, but yeah, I mean the colors and the font. I I like it. It's it's cool. It's cool. And the cool thing is that it's quite. I mean, besides this thing, which I don't really understand. The rest is quite clear, you know, and you could see it like, I mean, moving this to a component. So like, for example, the, like the link, well, all the links should work like this. So I'm going to just make my own link component and go from there, you know, same for the edge ones and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you. Thank you for watching and well, we'll see if I continue this series at some point. I mean, the website needs to be done, it's just not my priority right now. I just, I just was reading yesterday about Tailwind and decided to go for it, so yeah. But that's it for today. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.